seductress of Springfield, heartbreaker of many, teacher to terrible tykes, and loving wife to dear sweet Flanders. Edna was one of the only characters that was given a genuine character arc, deepening her story further than many in the show with some even claiming more so than the majority of the Simpsons family. She is a character so close to my heart and I'm so excited to share with you why in The Complete Timeline of Edna Krabappel. Art's teacher is named Krabappel? I've been calling her Crandall. Why didn't someone tell me? Oh, I've been making an idiot out of myself. Oh, by the way, if you like these timeline videos, then did you know I have an entire channel jam-packed full of them? Over on Screen Portal, I've made timelines on characters from Family Guy, Futurama, and even American Dad 2. The link is in the pinned comments, so check them out after this video. Edna's Early Life the early life of Edna is pretty unknown, but we do catch a glimpse of her running through the halls of Springfield High School behind Clancy Wiggum, videotaped for a documentary. She graduated from Springfield University, but then left to graduate with a master's at Bryn Mawr College. And so suggesting she probably left Springfield young to pursue bigger and better things. While she was out collecting academic achievements aplenty, she also met Ken, her husband. Ken is never shown in the show, but we do learn that he was a cheating drunk who ran off with their marriage counselor. Where's your husband buried? Probably between the hooters of a coat check girl in Shelbyville. Ha! So not the nicest guy, and was probably a huge reason why she left and then returned to Springfield. How come you don't live with Mr. Krabappel? Because Mr. Krabappel chased something small and fluffy down a rabbit hole. This may also reason why she is so assertive when entering new relationships. She knows exactly what she wants and definitely doesn't want. Her arrival back into Springfield. Edna returned to Springfield just before her first year of teaching at Springfield Elementary. And fresh off the bus, she was instantly swept off her feet by mysterious romantic Mo Sislak. Gossamer hair, limpid eyes, and the rack of an angel. But from the off, she set her standards of what she didn't need in a man, aka an alcoholic like her husband. My ex-husband was a drunk. I hate bars. So to gain her trust, Mo tossed Homer, Barney, Lenny, and Carl, and then Barney again, out of his bar before closing it claiming he was instead a therapist for said alcoholics. So the two of them spent the summer in love. But Mo was fearful of his friends blowing his good guy facade, so he needed to take her away. But the guy had no money, and so plotted to steal some Mayan gold coins from the clasps of young adventurer Snake Jailbird, aka Professor Jailbird. This would lead Snake onto his path of revenge and crime. I've been robbed. I'll take my revenge on society, by which I mean convenience stores. But we'll go into that in a timeline all on his own. Anyway, with Moe's newly discovered wealth, he planned to take Edna out of town for good. So she popped into the school to let them know she wouldn't be teaching, but was stopped in her tracks by Bart Simpson, who was sitting alone, defeated, and with little to no confidence, in summer detention. My sister's the smart one. All I do is get in trouble. And Edna, being the good, well-intentioned teacher, wanted to help. You'll make it through fourth grade, because I'm going to stay here and be your teacher. She breaks the news to Moe that she can't leave town, not when students like Bart Simpson needed her. Which sends Moe into a raging tivy, and he drives off without her. Edna's Single Life In the early episodes of the show, Miss Krabappel was painted as a typical run-of-the-mill cynical teacher, used as a tool to urge on Bart's bad behaviour and grade his poor performance showing that he was academically inadequate to Lisa Simpson. However, as her character progressed, we got to know the lady behind the desk. I'll do your homework for you. Hmm. And it seems she was a lady on the lookout for love. 
Answer the phone. <laughs> I need a man. But her lookouts seem to be in all the wrong places, and so thrown into several situations where Edna was painted as slightly promiscuous. Single parent, are we? No. Well, let's pretend you are. Get away from me. Maybe to heal the void she felt after her failed marriage, and so she flung herself into a number of romances that at times seemed pretty random. But on the other hand, she could be seen as a strong woman, and the only female character who was open and honest about what she wanted, and she went and got it. Mrs. Krabappel, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> It seems that amongst her raunchy rendezvous, she severely missed the cozy delights of a partnership, and she also implied that her biological clock was ticking away. And so, in the classic season 3 episode Bart the Lover, what started off as a joke turned into something quite unpredictable. After submitting a lonely heart ad, Edna suffered through some disappointing dates, one of which being notorious catfish Jasper. Oh, don't let my age fool you. It's cause there's a little snow on the roof. And forget how the rest of it goes. So when she received letters from a mysterious Woodrow promising the tender relationship she always craved, she was firmly under his spell. Oh, Woodrow. All conducted by Bart's genetically inherited fluency in the language of love. Maybe it's a beer talking, Marge, but you got a butt that won't quit. The episode brought out a wholesome, tender, and sweet side of Edna, rather than the ciggy smoking Joey Kramer cornering vixen we knew of before. Come and get him. We learned that all she wanted was a man who loved the way she looked in the morning and laughed at all of her jokes. Later on in the episode, my heart really breaks for her when Bart, aka Woodrow, stands her up in the restaurant after hours of outfit prep just to impress him. Can't help but feel partly responsible. Defeated and eating her dinner from a can, the Simpsons family work together to write a letter to mend her fractured confidence and heart. Anytime I hear the wind blow, it will whisper the name Edna. Oh. Ending the episode with Edna's and Bart's relationship far closer than it ever was before. Very quickly, if you're enjoying the video, then do me a huge favor and click that subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, YouTube isn't going to push this video. Thank you so much, and let's get on with the video. Edna as a teacher. While the men come and go, the one constant in her life is Bart Simpson, for better or for worse. Bart, you are the closest thing to a man in my life. And that's so depressing, I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> the pair have had a very complicated relationship throughout the years. Although Bart is an underachieving prankster, Edna has always had a sweet spot for him. So when Bart had to retake a test he failed, he studied really, really hard, but still felt short of passing. Seeing just how distraught he was and understanding his knowledge surpassed question and answer tests, she changed his grades. You mean I passed? Just barely. <gasps> And although she does seem like a passive, disinterested teacher most of the time, she wasn't always like that. She had a real passion for teaching, but the underfunded school system beat her down. The way anyone would feel, wanting to do good, but didn't have the materials to do so. She may not be glamorous or entertaining, she's just a real teacher who comes in every day no matter what. To cheer up his depressed teacher, Bart nominated her for Teacher of the Year. I can't imagine life without him. Bart Simpson. The two of them really share a sweet, innocent relationship. And to cheer her up again when she was feeling down, he took her out to the movies. Thanks for going out with me tonight. It really took my mind off stupid jerks. Edna's relationship with Principal Skinner. Even though she laughed at the prospect of dating Principal Skinner in Bart the Lover, she actually did in Season 8's Grade School Confidential. 
After seeking the refuge in Martin Prince's playhouse from Agnes, Edna and Seymour open up about their feelings, with Edna revealing how she finds Skinner's innocence absolutely charming, and Skinner's admiration of her tart honesty, and of course, that gorgeous laugh. You mean, ha! Mm -hmm. And it seems that wherever Edna's heart goes a flutter, Bar Simpson is always a few meters away. But being the only kid to witness this blossoming romance did have its drawbacks. One being that he was basically their Cupid, and so delivered their love messages. I love you, Edna Krabappel. <laughs> and quite rightly, this got on his nerves, and so pushed him to reveal what Ralph would describe as... Mrs. Krabappel and Principal Skinner were in the closet making babies, and I saw one of the babies, and the baby looked at me. And so resulting in a lot of angry parents, Skinner's and Krabappel's jobs at stake, and around 50 squished hot dogs. Leaving Skinner to reveal a secret to put all of the gossip and lies to bed. I am a virgin. Admitting this made the townsfolk leave their relationship alone, no longer guilty of displaying inappropriate and naked acts of affection in front of the children. But this didn't stop the two of them from breaking up. Or did they? Making us question if Skinner was even a virgin at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Seymour. Edna and Skinner break up. Her and Skinner's relationship seemed perfect on the surface, equaling out in naivety and experience, positivity and negativity. But the main divider came in the wrinkly form of Agnes Skinner, his mother. It's a party, mother. I was invited. Well, then I must have been invited too. Who proved to be both the rock and the hard place, constantly getting in between the pair. You've got to stop putting your mother ahead of me. We have a date. I'll be back in three hours. But Edna needed some commitment, and so Skinner stood up to his overbearing mother and finally popped the question for her hand in marriage. And the little other two would finally get their happy ending. But as the big day drew near, Skinner found his feet getting a little chilly. With a life spent under his mother's thumb, he feared that marriage to Edna would restrict his freedom further. He communicated his doubts to Homer, which Edna overheard while walking down the aisle. Edna shows her growth and maturity by stating that she only wants him to marry her if he really wants to. I'm sorry, Seymour. I can't marry someone who doesn't want to be with me. <laughs> she has come a long way from being a desperate looker for love and now cares about what her potential spouse feels and wants too. Single and alone again, Edna returned all of her wedding gifts, including comic book guy's Hulk Melon Shaper. Would you like to get some coffee? And a family bucket of chicken. Surprisingly, the two of them hit it off, and before long he takes her to Comic Con and asks her to marry him in a Klingon ceremony. We will honeymoon in Nebulon 5, also known as San Diego. But before she can say yes, Seymour bursts in, dressed as Catwoman. Oh, they told me it was Catman! Skinner and Comic Book Guy fight each other for her affection, but Edna breaks up and turns both of the men down. Good for you, Mrs. K. Yeah, you don't need a husband to be happy. Edna's marriage to Ned Flanders. Later in the show, Edna went on to form a happy relationship with everyone's favourite neighbour Reno, Ned Flanders. Ha! Ah! Oh. Many viewers found this pairing to be a bit random, but it does have some logic. Ned Flanders and Seymour Skinner both share some similar attributes. They were both nice guys and they weren't the type to play games or try to manipulate Edna. And they were sometimes shown as pushovers too, meaning that Ned could be attracted to someone like Edna who could take charge. She could also insert some confidence and let's face it, some big old balls. So much so that in one episode, Edna supports Ned in getting his borrowed stuff back. I understand you borrowed a thing or two from Ned that you never returned. And she makes him feel better for punching Homer after all those amped up years. 
And let's face it, Flanders is a hunk. Have you seen that body? She also became a stepmom to sheltered Rod and Todd, helping them get out of their shells as much as she did with Ned. Their happy marriage lasted for a few years until she tragically died off screen. Marsha Wallace, voice actor for Edna, sadly passed away in 2013. She brought such a warmth and tenderness to the show that no one could ever replicate. Usually it's just soup for one, salad for one, wine for three. <laughs> As such, the Simpson staff made the right decision to retire her character completely from the show. Edna's death. The loss of Edna came as a huge blow to the residents of Springfield, most of all her husband, Ned. Sure do miss that laugh. In the episode Dairy Queen, we see how much she truly loved Ned, writing in her diary that her relationship with him was a dream come true. Now I gotta clean my specs. Thanks, Edna. As a teacher, she touched many lives too, including Bar Simpson, who wrote, We'll really miss you, Mrs. K, upon the chalkboard. And even local bad boy Nelson Muntz was a bit cut up. I miss her too. To carry on her legacy, Ned became a teacher for Springfield Elementary, and he had some pretty huge shoes to fill. And when he doubted whether or not he could do the job, he just had to remember her immortal words. Remember, if you can teach one kid one thing, then today will be a success. She always persevered within her love life, her morals, and her simply spending hours and hours with Bart, helping him to grow into the scallywag we all know and love. And so that completes the timeline of Edna, a character I really genuinely adore. Let's celebrate her by writing your favourite Edna moments in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, then click that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.